My name is Hans Kandel, Extension Agronomist at NDSU. Over the last decade or so, we have seen that rainfall events have been more erratic and also heavier rainfall in certain uh, events like over two inches of rain. And many times when we get rainfall, excessive rainfall in the spring, it causes uh, overland flooding, it causes a ponding of uh, the fields and crops will die. Or in the mid-season period, we find that uh, excessive rain can uh, reduce the crop yield of uh, the various crops. Then in 2019, we had a very wet fall. In some cases, the farmers could not get into the fields because the fields were too wet. So one thing to kind of think about uh, managing excess water is to put in tile. Tile is putting in a pipe about three feet down into the ground and it has perf perforation. And if there is an outlet, you can design a system where the pipe will take the water out into a ditch and therefore reduce the amount of water and stress for the plants. I'm going to kind of demonstrate a little bit about the real function of tile and how it relates to soil moisture. So I have here a bucket and the bucket is representing the tile. And in the bucket I have a sponge and I am pushing the sponge under water. So if I put the sponge under water, basically all the air goes out of the sponge and the sponge is completely filled with water. In farming we call that saturation. All the pores in the soil are full. If we look at the sponge as being the soil, and I will just take the, the saturated soil above the tie line, and if we take the, the sponge above the tie line, we see that water is moving out of the sponge and air is moving into the sponge. The sponge is representing the soil. So basically we're talking about moving water out of the profile, moving air in and creating conditions that are ideal for the crops. We have a name for the situation as I have in my hand. It is called field capacity. What field capacity means is that all the water naturally drained out of the system. However, we do know that there is still water into the soil because we have what is called a water holding capacity. So each soil can hold water. Like I squeeze the, the water out of it, the plant is trying to utilize moisture to the point where it cannot extract more water out of the soil and that is called wilting point. So in agriculture, we want to have the water level in the soil between satur not saturation, field capacity and wilting point. And the closer we can get to field capacity, the more ideal the situation is for crop production. So we are not removing any water that can be utilized for the plant, but only that excess moisture that drains naturally by gravity into the tile pipe. So in the area that we have here, we have an area of about eight acres in our research site, where we have divided it up in eight parcels of about an acre each. And we have devised a system which is called a control box. This water control structure is able to manage the water in the field. And I will be kind of looking at this in a tabletop model. The tabletop is a small model. So here we have the pipe coming from the field side and the water goes into the pipe, into the structure, out of the structure, into the stream. In the center we have blocks. And if we put a block into the slot, there is one block here, and I put it in and we can see here that the water has to go up to the block area. It will go over the block and then it can go out. So the more blocks I put in, the higher the water table can be on the field side. But it is set so that if the water table gets higher than the block I set, the water goes over it and still goes out. We call this a water control structure because it gives the producer some 
a measure of control over the water table. However, we do need to have rainfall in the field side to fill up the water in the field. The second half of the season, when the crop is utilizing a lot of moisture, the water table tends to drop below the tile. So typically we are utilizing this control structure early in the season and late in the season. Early in the season, I open it so that the water can drain and we can plant. And then I put it uh, one or two blocks in order to conserve some moisture for the summer season. So the crops can utilize the moisture. At the end of the season, when we start to harvest and there is excess moisture, we open the box again so that the water leaves the field and we can actually harvest and drive on the field. This site is set up, as I mentioned, in eight different blocks. We do have tile under each replicated area. We have a tile line exactly under the plots. And if we just kind of look behind me, there are plots and in the middle of the plot is where the tile line is going all the way to the end of the field. The distance of uh, the tile lines is 25 feet in this particular trial. And the reason that we did that is to maximize the number of experimental plots in this field. Some of the benefits that you uh, experience with tile drainage is, is that we can get into the field early in the season. The second one, we can operate any time just after a big rain. The water can drain very fast and we can apply herbicides or fungicides very quickly after a heavy rain. Also, harvesting is not an issue. We can always get into this field. Behind me, you can see that we had spring wheat and now we have a cover crop growing on it. And I don't need to worry that I can't get into this field next year. The reason is because we can drain this water and by next season we can just move into this field very easily. This site has been in operation since about 2008. I have combined some of the data on soybeans for the last 20 experiments that I've been doing. And each time we do an experiment we find that the tile drains area yields a little bit higher. What about a dry year? Even in a dry year there is no negative effect of trial, there is a slight positive effect. But overall, over those 20 experiments, over many years, including years when it was completely dry and the tile never was running, we saw a 7% increase in yield. So the take home message is that if we can manage the water table, if we can adjust the water table at the critical stages of the crop production as well as the harvest, we can obtain a higher yield with less effort and less hassle. Many of the growers that I'm working with are telling me that the uh, ease of working in a tiled field is so much uh, more uh, enjoyable than getting stuck all the time. So in summary, in all our research we have conducted so far, we have seen when there are wet conditions that tile is out yielding the non-tile. In the dry year, there is not much difference between the two yields and that is because in the dry year the tile also doesn't run. So no negative effect in those dry years. The control boxes are there to manage the water table. So in order to find out if we actually have a difference in the water table level, we have some observation wells in the field that we have been monitoring for um, the past seasons. And we're also monitoring it on a, a seasonal basis after heavy rains. So what I'm doing is I'm going down with uh, the measurement till we hit the water and then we can measure where the water table is in, the, in this particular uh, field. So the, we get the beep and we know now that the water table uh, is this deep. This is typically at the end of the season where the water table is below the tile because the tile is only three feet deep. As you can see, the water is deeper than the three feet. Once we get rain, the water table can come up to about a foot below the surface. So it is very important that we are actually managing the water table. In this section, I will be describing some of the results that we found on the research site. 
The site has, as I mentioned, eight different blocks where we have a tile control structure available. And in each particular block, we also have two observation wells to monitor the water table. In this picture, I am showing you the results of some of the trials. When you put in tile on the left top corner, you see that the water is removed from the soil, whereas where there is no tile, water standing in the field as well as in the right picture. With water standing in the field, we can anticipate that the yields will be quite a bit lower. There will be a negative effect on the yield. In this specific case, the yield disadvantage was about 6.6 .6 bushel, which equals to close to 17% difference between tile drains and non-tile drains. One of the factors that we need to consider when we are talking about tile drainage is that there is also often an interaction between the management and tile drainage. In this graph, we have four varieties. On the right, we see the varieties without tile. The left bar shows here the yield in bushels per acre. So obviously, the tiled results are a lot higher than the no tile results. There is an interaction that you can see between the various uh, varieties in this particular slide. Not only is the, the management important uh, as far as uh, the varieties or other applications of fertilizer, fungicide, etc., but one of the dominant aspects is the timing of planting. Typically with tile, we have the opportunity to plant in a very timely fashion. In this graph, I'm showing you tile draining and early planting. So the red bars is early planting. And on the right is no tile versus the left, which is tile. Again, on the left is the bushels per acre. So what I want to kind of focus on is especially the difference between early planting, early planting with no tile versus early planting with tile. That difference is about 28% in 2019. However, if you look at the green bars, planting late did not make a big difference if there was tile or no tile. Some of the aspects that I would like to talk about is the underwater under uh, the sur surface water table. In this particular graph, we see the water table as recorded in 2009. And I will go over a number of these water table graphs. The way we read them is that we have the soil surface on the top. On the left, we go down into inches below the surface. The red bar is the water table in the untiled area and the blue bar is the water table in the tiled area. So as you can see, and uh, also on the bottom, we see the rainfall events. So the water table here in this particular graph shows that the water table in the six week after planting, which is about two months into the season, was about uh, 30 inches below the surface. And as the season progresses and the crop starts to utilize a lot of moisture and there is hardly any rainfall, the water table drops quite dramatic, dramatically uh, under, uh, the, under the level of the tile drainage. So here we see a water table movement in 2010. So again, I want to draw your attention. This is the soil surface. This is below in inches, the surface is where the water table is. The undrained is definitely a lot higher than the drained. And again, we have the green bars, the rainfall. The reason why I'm showing you a few of these graphs is that every year is gonna be different. And here you can see that the water table was about 15 inches below the surface. That was way too much for the crop for optimum conditions of growth. Um, so if we are looking at a completely different season, the 2011 season, and in the bottom, we go from May till about uh, 
the beginning of August when the water tables seem to be fairly high. And then as the crop starts to grow, accelerates its growth and the utilization of moisture, especially with corn or also in wheat, a lot of moisture is taken out of the soil and we see an, an inc a decrease of the water table very rapidly. This one is in centimeters, but you can still see the graph going up and down. And where we see these peaks, that means that the water table was very close to the surface. Whereas if you look at the blue line, that one was uh, at a level where the crop did not have any negative effects of the water table. In this particular graph, I kind of want to explain, as I was talking about the control box, how that kind of looks in the water table graph. So our tile is approximately three feet down in the ground. And in the graph here, I kind of represent this is the tile line. And if it was completely open, that would be reflecting where tile would go out. As we see here a diagram of a control block um, box with several blocks raising the water table to this level. So in this particular case, the blue line is kind of indicating the top of the drained area. So this is the controlled drained area versus the non-drained area. So as we started to experiment with this um, uh, water management, I started to kind of play with different levels of, of the blocks. And in this case, we had to set, set the blocks so that we were actually uh, conserving a bit of moisture. So basically, if the tile would have been open, the water level would have been only at about three feet. But now because of the block, I was raising in the second half, if you look here, that is in June, uh, beginning of July, I raised that water table slightly up and conserved that moisture for the crop growth. I'm going to talk now with a few numbers over a spring wheat trial. We have worked with spring wheat, winter wheat, corn, soybeans. I just give this as an example to walk you through. So first of all, here is a graph of the several of the water tables. This one is 2009. 2010 and 11. As you can see, the water table is different. So I'm going to walk you through each of the water tables and talk about what might have happened during those years where we benefit. So the first graph is from 2009. Now, the red indicates here where the tile line is in uh, relationship to the soil surface, which is here at zero. In this case, the bars on the top is uh, indicating rainfall events in uh, on, indicated on the right. Here we have uh, starting in May the water table level uh, of the controlled drainage and an open drain. So I'm going to kind of walk you through. So the controlled drainage was set at the level of 85 centimeters below the surface, which is a little bit less than three feet. So if you look here, that is where the water table was set. The red bar is where the tile draining line actually was. So that is the difference between the two. So when it was completely open, when all the water could drain, it was at that 100 centimeters below the surface. So that is the difference. So what did we see when we got a little rainfall in the June time frame, the water table when there was a block, where there was a block could raise a little bit to that level where the block was set. So the water available for the wheat is actually right there in that little triangle. So it doesn't look to be a lot, but if you look at the time frame, this is in July, and into July we see that the grain filling was taking place of the wheat, and that was is a critical period for uh, the availability of soil water. So the next one is in 2010, and here we have again a situation where we have a water table that is very close to the surface. So the excess water was about 50 centimeters below the surface, and there in the blue is kind of indicating where we had excess moisture. So removing that excess moisture 
was beneficial for his crop season. In this particular graph in 2011, you see that there are three excess water events and it ended up to be as close as 40 centimeters, that's slightly more than a foot below the surface. Whereas the blue line is indicating where we had the controlled drainage set. So if we then look at the yield, the check management, what, uh, we, com what we compare the control management with, uh, you can see the difference, best management has a higher yield in each of the years. And over the two years, we see here an increase in yield, the A and B signifying that we can truly say that this is a significant difference. So this was for wheat. The same applies to the other crops that I have been working with. So one of the things with controlled drainage is that we really need to design a field for this particular um, opportunity to use controlled drainage. In this graph, we see a typical flat field in the Red River Valley, where on the bottom we have a main, and then the laterals are basically feeding into the main. However, if we are talking about tile drainage with a control box, we need to consider zones, because the control box can control the water table, but that level that it can control is about one foot. You cannot control a lot more because that will interfere then with the higher part of the crown of the field where you get then saturated conditions. So in this case, the field is designed with zones that have about 30 uh, or uh, one foot increments uh, in the design here. There are two control boxes. There could be another design where the control boxes are here indicated on the left. So the critical thing is that it needs to be designed for this specific purpose. If you look from the air in one of those fields, it looks like a very complicated field. But typically we do the installation once and the tile field will be in operation for a long period of time. Now I talked about the control boxes as a means to control the water table. The other way to control a water table would be with pumps. Some of the flat fields in the northern part of uh, Minnesota and North Dakota have pumps. The pumps typically have an on and off switch available and they can be either manually closed or opened or there could be a switch built in into the pump area the, where uh, the water table is measured and the pump cycles on when the water table is too high and when the water table is where you have set it, the pump would shut off. So the pump would be also a control structure. So looking at some data from various states, comparing a completely open tile compared to one that is managed. So this is a snapshot of just a few experiments, but overall there was a 0.3% increase, but in Ohio, close to 5% increase just working with managing the water table, comparing to a open, completely open tile. The biggest benefit though, is that when we let less water going out of the tile system, we typically find that we also reduce the nit nitrate going into the stream. So with controlled drainage in this particular observation, there was about 34% less nitrate that left the field, which is a big environmental benefit. So one of the things that can be done too is now utilizing the controlled drained fields to sub-irrigate. And here I'm giving an example of a farmer who put a tank on the edge of the field, pumped water from the creek into the tank, and I will show you how that particular field worked. So here is the field uh, of this particular farm. On the top end, he has the tank. The water flows from the tank. He had to make a special main here, but the water flows from the main. This is where the control structures are. And this one is divided in three units, about one foot in elevation different. So each uh, control box is controlling about one third of the field. So as the water goes 
from the top end that goes into the pipe and it will go out but the water will not leave the field because there is a control structure so sub irrigation without control structures does not work because the water then just uh, flows out of the system so we need to have a control box included in this system in order for it to work but it is an opportunity for farmers to also use the tile drainage system as a sub irrigation system um, here's another example of maybe how a field is divided in four parts each a foot difference where uh, there are several control structures at the end of the field that can be set now you have seen me uh, demonstrating a control box where the box um, is actually operated by hand with the different blocks there are also uh, units available where they can be remotely uh, controlled uh, with um, just uh, some cellular uh, transmission of information so it does not need to be by hand it can also be automated uh, the last uh, thing i kind of would like to talk about is that when we think about tile drains there are a few other opportunities so in this case i was experimenting with ridge tilling and uh, putting uh, the crop on a slight elevation so here is an example where we had a 2.5 inch rainfall so if the infiltration rate is less than the rainfall we typically get ponding even in tile fields but having here ridges uh, kept the crop above the water level and the water in between had the time to soak in but this in combination with a control box helps us to get rid of some of the excess moisture and if the water table was higher than the blocks we would have set it would be leaving the field but in cases of uh, kind of a drier condition in the second half of the season this actually would consi be considered water harvesting so water harvesting is when we are trying to get extra moisture into the system so here you can see my tile control structures in the winter the ridges there is some of the snow melt taking place the water is not running off it goes into the field it recharges the water table if the water table is becoming higher than i need it the water will just go over the box in the spring and out out into the stream so in other words the summary water management can increase the yield and reduce the nitrates discharge the water table should be monitored especially in the beginning so that you get a good handle on how tile drainage works we can utilize control structures, but we can also uh, use pumps. And then lastly, sub-irrigation can be utilized if we use uh, these uh, systems. So uh, I will be around for a few questions. Thank you for your attention.